I will also address our Arab and Muslim brothers. As God says in the Holy Scripture, however, this particular verse speaks about of the ultimate consequence of our solidarity as one Muslim nation. When we see the enemies moving to target one Muslim people, we should remain conscious and we should act in support of those people, simply to foil the schemes of the enemy. Once the enemy succeeds in their scheme in one country, they move to the other. People of Iran are dissatisfied with their leaders, clearly. How is that affecting their faith in Islam? Well, we have to remember that the entire Islamic theocracy that is today in Iran was founded on Islamic ideology. The people who brought it in had this idealistic view of the purity, the breakaway from greed and fraud that this regime would bring. And of course, they've been disillusioned by that. Not only that, but right from the outset, Khomeini promised that his agenda was to bring the fundamentals of his Islamic Iran to the entire world. And we can see what's happened to the greater Middle East and to Iran as a result of that. So the people are paying the price for their government and they associate that with Islam. Today, we must remain vigilant. We should roll up our sleeves from Afghanistan to Gaza to Lebanon. We should move and act. We should roll up our sleeves get prepared for action. And this is what I wanted to start my sermon with. First, to our brothers in Lebanon and Palestine, who have been reeling under all types of injustice. And Iranians are looking for an alternative because at their heart, Iranians are not secular people. They are spiritual people. They believe in God. They believe in a creator and they want relationship with him. They've tried it with Islam. They've seen what it's done to their lives and they're looking for something better and they're finding Jesus. We will decide about when and how we will respond. But I can tell you one thing. It will be noticed. It will be painful. Uh, and I think that the people of Iran who are watching us understand that it's not against the Iranian people, it's against the radical regime that dragged the Iranian people into this situation. The verse ends with that God is all-knowing, all the wise. This is the end of the verse. God is knowing and is wise. Ask any Israeli official, what is their long-term plan for peace other than what's going, what you're doing in Lebanon and what's happening in Gaza? So I ask you, sir, what is Israel's long-term plan for peace? I appreciate the sincerity of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, and we have a peace treaty with Jordan. But when you look at what's happening today in our neighborhood, attacks from Lebanon, attacks from Yemen, attacks from Iran, every Israeli asks himself today, who is my partner? It is the mercy. God will grant us mercy, which means if we are standing together, side by side, joining hands, joining forces, we will be granted mercy from God. And what kind of impact are these believers in Jesus having on Iranian society? Huge impact because you have to consider the uh, trauma that Iranians are facing today. They are oppressed from every corner. Rates of depression, addiction, prostitution, suicide, mental health are at catastrophe levels. And the Christians are the ones who carry peace in this turmoil. So people around them want to know, how is it that you are this way? How is it that you are steady? Where are you rooting yourself? And so, of course, the answer becomes Jesus. Well, we know, of course, uh, well, we've heard rather that reports of thousands of mosques are closing. Is, is that true? Mosques are closing. Churches are illegal unless they're completely closed to visitors. So uh, religion all around is um, at crisis point in Iran. But truth prevails and people are looking for truth. And that's where the hope of Jesus Christ comes in. Yeah, and of course, we know from watching the news, the leaders of Iran want to destroy Israel and the West. Do the Iranian people share these beliefs? 
Not at all. This is the agenda of the government, of the very small minority in Iran. In fact, I've seen people in Iran turn around and leave messages on social media saying, tell Israel to come and bomb us. They want to be free of their own government at any cost, and they don't share the agenda to wipe out Israel. This is, uh, this is something we need to have clear, particularly as Christians who pray, to understand the difference between a government and the people who pay the first price for their government. That is incredible. We do not hear that very often from the people of Iran. We don't get to hear their voice. Well, Lana, how can we pray for the people of Iran? Let's pray that they continue to find Jesus. This is spiritual war that we're in. We know we have people at, in authority who are reaping destruction, but ultimately the person calling the shots is the devil himself. Yeah. And the Bible tells us our fight is spiritual. Our warfare is spiritual. So we must put on spiritual weapons, prayer, faith, and we must engage in those things actively. Let's not pay lip service to it. Let's be informed. Let's find out what the church needs and let's do something about it. In the name of Allah, the Omnipotent, the Merciful, may God's blessings be, be upon His Prophet, Messenger, and may eternal glory be to God Almighty. May God's peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad and His grace be upon Ali, Fatima, and the followers and the companions of the Prophet. And we pray to God Almighty to accept in His mercy all the next of kin and all the followers till the day of judgment. I was of the opinion that the best way to commemorate the memories of my brother, the all beloved, the eloquent tongue of the peoples of the region and the jewel of the crown of Lebanon, his eminence late Hassan Nasrallah. I was of the opinion that the best way to commemorate his memory in this ceremony is to address certain issues. This sermon and this address is directed to the entire Muslim nation. Yet, in particular, it is addressed to both the Palestinian and Lebanese people who are inflicted with the demise of the fallen martyr Hassan Nasrallah. What a loss! Wow, so today the Iran Supreme Leader actually held a Friday prayer for Muslims encouraging them, giving them hope and letting them understand that, you know, God is with them, Allah is with them. And also, you know, talking about some verses from the Quran to encourage them based on what is happening between Iran and Israel. So the ministry refund, um, the lady that was interviewed in this particular clip, also spoke about you know what iran are passing through and letting us understand that they are religious people they are more of religious people and she felt like you know jesus is taking over christianity is taking over because most of the mosques nowadays have been closed down and she just shared her own view on the matter and what she feels might happen in the nearest future regarding the country Iran. Then the Israel ambassador to the UN also gave a short speech letting us understand that their response to 
Iran will be noticeable and very painful. And letting them to understand that it's not all about Iran is beyond what they think. And they ask them question that how do they intend to create peace? And based on my own understanding, I don't think the man answered that question because he was talking about something else. I was expecting him to just go straight to the point. But I think that was the reason why they didn't give him enough time to actually talk. There was not enough time for him to talk. So in my own opinion, I don't think he gave an answer to that question. So how do they intend to create peace? in the in the nearest future or now so uh let me know your point of view guys regarding this video about the the three clips you just watch now what are your opinions let's you know keep the discussion going on in the comment box and i'll be ready to read your comments thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one